everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. And we are discussing and talking about the command authority of a follower of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the command authority. Ultimate authority has to be delegated. Because we've already read where Elohim had authority over the entire earth. Of course, he created it. So the Bible is made up of blood covenants. First in the blood of animals, second in the blood of men through circumcision, and then through the sinless blood of Jesus. Well, the whole book is pointing at him, my spiritual father has written a book. I'm studying it now. Jesus in every book of the Bible. And that's when he preached the great message of the fourth man. And here we are. Genesis chapter three. Now Adam had the right to do it because he was the God of this world. But he didn't have a moral right to do what he did. Genesis chapter three. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither touch it. He didn't say anything about touching it. That's dangerous. She made that up. Adam should have corrected it. He should have said, wait a minute. That's not what he said. Well, the serpent would have been slammed down right there. Yes. Amen. He didn't say anything. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat now, what did God say? The day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. And the eyes did eat and also gave to her husband. I want to make a little mark there. She did eat and they, he was not off somewhere else, he was right there. Yes, he was. So he was party to this. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord oh God Adam, and Adam said, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. The first example of anyone trying to meet their own needs 
without Elohim. And they fell. And faith comes by hearing, and, mm-hmm. but his voice created fear and they ran because they were naked. They had never seen their bodies when you read the entire text, for the glory was on them. They had perfect bodies. They were perfect. But to them, they'd never seen their naked bodies. And to them, and they felt ashamed for what they had done. They had to be covered up. They were afraid. So the only fruit mentioned in the garden was figs because of fig leaves. So the fruit obviously was a fig tree. Then in chapter 11 of Mark gospel, that fig tree paid the price. (laughs) Amen. So, and then the curse. The Lord God in the 14th verse said to the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field and upon your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed and you will bruise thy head and he'll bruise you and and it shall bruise your head and thou shall bruise his heel. Uh, That's a serious, Serious, serious punishment. Because we know who this was. In the book of Isaiah, his name was Lucifer. Which means bright and morning star. Amen. And from what I've studied and what I've heard from the Lord, I am completely, totally convinced he was ebony black. All of the music and everything was in him. Why why persecute the black man? What's the deal here? I mean, what did he do wrong? He didn't have any part of that. I'm convinced that he was the God of praise and music. The pipes that were in you. Now take that for instance. Who, (laughs) who are the most musical people on this planet? And those of you that are too young to remember, (laughs) the Duke Ellingtons. Oh, Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Louis Armstrong. And uh, praise God. Errol Garner, who wrote the music to Misty, and lyrics were put to it, which I sang to Gloria on our first date. Look at me. Anyway, (laughs) it worked for me. We got back to her dad's house. I said, Gloria, will you marry me? She said, okay. Went in the house and said, what have I done? I don't even know this guy. Oh, well, I get out of it later. Mm -hmm. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) 
in just a few days, it will be year number 63. And she's not out of it. <laughs> we started out with nothing. We've been blessed. But here's, the, this was serious. Now let me set the stage for you. After that, he was the spirit behind killing the prophets. Nobody just decided I'm just going to kill some prophets. Nothing happens. This, this book is subject to the spiritual world. It came out of the spiritual world. So suddenly he has command authority. And he is no good. So he began to kill the, the, the prophets. Well, the prophets were blessed of God. And Elohim would speak through the mouth of the prophets and give the people something to say. so that they could say what he said. Enoch did that. And we know he is in heaven today in a flesh and bone body. Along with Elisha, the two witnesses. Amen. Amen. Now those two, you talk about command authority. They had it. Yes. But it was not because of the name of Jesus. They did not have the name of Jesus. But it was Jesus himself that gave it to them. And this is the reason I say this. In, in, in my prayer times over this, the three of them were there. God the Father gave the words to Jesus. Then he spoke them because they both knew that when time was right and full, he would be born into this earth as a savior. And in that, I saw it in the spirit. He was holding like that. He was holding this gray, lifeless thing in his hands. And he said, life be. I bless you. That's the first word any human heard was blessing, not cursing. God is a blessing God. God is a loving God because he is love. And we, we have known or had intimate relationship with the love of God, but do we believe the love? There's a question there. Yes. Yes. But you have to read this to do it. Not by what you feel or see. It has, in the beginning, the belief of it has nothing to do with what we feel or see. It has to do with the blood that backed it. So it can be believed without any feelings or whether they doubt any, just totally emotionless. But it's written in the book. And let's, let's go aside here now for a moment. We're talking about command authority here. I hadn't planned to do this at all, but I'm not the boss. <laughs> First John, little John.
Oh, thank you, Jesus. First John chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon with our and our hands. Who he was there. He could have walked around behind the cross and it could have seen his I don't know that he didn't. And have seen the stripes by which he's healed. And you could just close your eyes and just, just allow that blood to just drop on you. And, oh, anyway, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we've seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, which was manifested unto us. That which we have seen, heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we've heard of him. Now, hey, this is the message which we've heard of him. Amen. This is it. I said, this is it. This is the message which we have heard of him. I believe that. I believe it with all my heart because it is written in blood. God is light. Oh, now we know some, we wear the armor of light, not darkness. Woo. God is light. Oh, glory to God. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. I believe that. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, I believe that. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer. We have a counselor. We have an advocate, a lawyer with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation, uh, the sacrifice for my sins, not for ours only, but all the sins of the whole world. <laughs> I don't have to feel anything. I believe that. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I'm just despise myself for doing it. I don't have any right to do with that either. Do do that either, because I have a, an advocate. I have a lawyer. Oh, yeah. And most of you have heard my testimony down in South Florida many, many, many years ago. And uh, there was some things going on. I won't go into that, but I, I, I really got angry. And I just didn't want to go back over there and preach. And I just started, I prayed in the spirit about praying. And for those of you that know, I prayed in tongues. Yeah, I prayed in tongues. It hadn't passed away. Amen. That's a lie of the devil. Amen. As many as our God shall call. Amen. So, I didn't want to go back over there and preach. And I'm just walking around that room and I said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. Why not on the inside? You know why not. I lost my temper and I don't want to go back over. Just get somebody else. And uh, just really, it just really bothered me that I let my temper get away from me without walking in love. And it tearing me up on the inside. 
and I heard him say, run in here, where any Christian can do that. But you have to practice. Yes. And you have to expect to hear. Anyway, and I heard him say, didn't you confess that before me? I said, yes, I did. And I got a great revelation. <laughs> he said, Kenneth, when you confess that sin is not when I found out about it. <laughs> he said, listen, he said, that's when you got rid of it. That is a, an exceeding great and precious covenant promise right here. Right here. Or you can just walk on the edge of repentance all the time. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, anyway, I'm going further into that. But we're talking about the command authority of, the, of a follower of Jesus Christ. The authority of the believer. So many Christians, I've heard the Lord say it. You have to teach this every generation. Yes. Yes. Even if you teach your children this, yes. you have to remind them of it as they grow up. Yes. Well, I didn't know it. My parents didn't know it. I mean, my mother would have, she would have torn this up. <laughs> she just prayed till something happened. Yeah. Now, later on, she did find it out. But she, she'd, she'd just get out and pray until something break. Anyway, so now then, the rulership then of Satan took place. He became what the Bible calls the God, little g, the God of this world. Oh, and he's a hard taskmaster the God of this world. All right, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Are you there? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Now, this is the great apostle Paul, but this is the spirit of God speaking through him, right? I mean, he just didn't, he didn't just make it up. And through different scriptures, he made sure everybody knew that. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty or shame not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden from them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, thus the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who, who is the image of God should shine unto them. Glory be to God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. The devil is the God of this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right. You believe that? Yes. I'll be back in just a moment. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, he will have whatever he says. Believer, it's time to operate in the fullness of the power of Christ in you. Get your Authority in Jesus package, an MP3 teaching and study guide book by Kenneth Copeland, and learn what it means to be seated in heavenly places in Christ, reigning with Him. Jesus became a human like us so we could become like Him. When you use the name of Jesus in faith, all the power and authority He has backs you up. 
Are you needing wisdom? Receive it by faith. Are you facing sickness? Speak God's healing promises. Lack? Declare His provision. God's creative power goes to work when by faith you speak out His promises. Learn to use your authority in Jesus and fulfill His call to bring salvation and deliverance to the world. Request your free copy of your Authority in Jesus package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. As a child of God, you have been given authority to operate in the blessing. Learn how to live in the victories Jesus has given you. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside of the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Since 1973, KCM has delivered the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine worldwide. We're reaching nearly 400,000 people in 202 countries and territories on five continents, all absolutely free. Every magazine contains faith-building articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories from people like you in testimonies of real life victory. Equip your kids with powerful tools for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. With a variety of viewing formats available, sharing is easier than ever. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Click on the interactive magazine option where you'll find bonus content, videos, and downloads. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today at kcm.org. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Period. Join us for the California Victory Campaign, November 14th through the 16th. Register at kcm.org slash ca today. Don't miss tomorrow, uh, and now you go to church Wednesday night, but anyway, don't it, record it. Understand, DVR, near, you know what to do. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, this is Kenneth Copeland and our, all of our class reminding you that God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.